Arizona State football has been in a very interesting spot as of late. They had a couple of good years under Todd Graham and did have a resurgence under Herm Edwards, but unfortunately, things have really spiraled out of control. The NCAA cracked down on him, Herm Edwards got the school into a lot of trouble, and after a disastrous 2022 season, it looks like Arizona State is going to go into a dark spot and they would need a coach that could bring him out of it. Arizona State decided to make a risky hire as they just grabbed Kenny Dillingham. He'll be the youngest Power 5 coach in college football, but could be the guy to turn things around. In today's video, I want to give my thoughts on the hire, the state of the Arizona State program, talk about how this guy rose up the ranks, and ultimately give my opinion and thoughts on everything. But before we get started, we're so close to 100k, so be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like if you want to support today's video, turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload, and let me know what player, team, topic, coach, or situation I could cover next. Now, let's get started and talk about Arizona State hiring Kenny Dillingham. Kenny has a very interesting story. While most college football coaches did play football in college, Dillingham never got that chance. He would start coaching at 17 years old as he tore his ACL during his senior year and eventually began to work with the JV team at Shapiro High School in Arizona. He became the offensive coordinator at only 21 years old and then went on to go to Arizona State for college. After that, he was hired to be an offensive assistant by Mike Norville in 2014, and this guy was slowly starting to go up the ranks. When Coach Norvell got hired to go to Memphis in 2016, Dillingham was brought as a graduate assistant there. A couple years later, he was named the quarterback's coach in 2017, and then he was made the offensive coordinator in 2018. In his two years there, Memphis had back-to-back -to -back top five offenses in college football, and he was ranked as the number one recruiter in the American Athletic Conference. Because of how well he was doing, a big-time SEC school wanted his talents. Auburn decided to hire him as the offensive coordinator, and during his time there, he helped Bo Nix become the SEC Freshman of the Year, and he led the most improved offense in the SEC. While he probably could have stayed at Auburn for a little while longer, Mike Norvell had taken the head coaching job at Florida State, so he decided to reunite there. While he was there, he ended up coaching Jordan Travis and a couple of other guys, and actually led them to a decent amount of success despite their poor record and despite not having a lot to work with. Because of his connection with Dan Lanning, when Dan Lanning took the job at Oregon, those two had previously been connected at Memphis, so Lanning made the call and got Kenny to move to Eugene. In his one year at Oregon, he did wonders. He helped turn Bo Nix into one of the most improved quarterbacks in the country, led Oregon to an insane season, and their offense was a lot of fun to watch. Because of how well he did, Arizona State was quietly watching him. When Herm Edwards eventually got fired, they made the call to Dillingham, and he happily accepted. He said, quote, It's an honor and privilege to be named the head coach at Arizona State. This is a special place to myself and my wife, and I truly believe the team we will build here is one that the state of Arizona and the Sun Devils can rally behind and be proud of. I'm excited to get to work and promise that no one will work harder than the staff we will put together. So, he was going to become the youngest Power 5 head coach in the country, but was he qualified for the job? The short answer was yes. Kenny's offenses were ridiculously effective. Oregon had one of the most productive units in the country, as they had nearly 512 yards per game, which was third in the FBS, 7 yards per play, which was fifth in the FBS, and 40.2 points per game, which was fourth in the FBS. The guy was insane with Oregon's offense, and this was not the first time. He was terrific with Brady White at Memphis, great with Bonix and helped develop Jordan Travis while at Florida State. But is this a good hire? In my opinion, I'm going to give this a B-. They may have needed someone a little bit more experienced to bring him out of this hole, but he also has a lot of potential. He's going to be good on offense, he has local recruiting ties, and seems to be a coaching phenom. Because of all the NCAA stuff though, the Sun Devils are likely going to have to face some fallout, and given the state of the program as is, it's going to take a little while to give Kenny a fair judgment, and it might take him longer for him to reach his potential there. With USC and UCLA leaving the conference though, Arizona State will look to become one of the top Pac-12 programs, and with all the great recruits that come out of the state of Arizona, there really is a lot of potential here. Add in the fact that he was also a high school coach should give him a leg up in that recruiting world, and with the beauty of Arizona State's campus and all the connections he has, he could do wonders for the program. There is one major domino that could still fall, and that is Dante Moore. He was the lead recruiter for him when he committed to Oregon, and in case you don't know who that is, Moore is a five-star recruit from Detroit, and if he decides to flip and not go to UCLA, then there's a good chance he lands at Arizona State and becomes his guy. I think he would do wonders with Moore, and he'd be someone who could elevate the Arizona State program. Overall though, Arizona State is in a pretty bad spot because of everything going on with the NCAA. He will have to rebuild a troubled roster, and he does not have a lot of experience running a program on his side. Either way though, I think this will be a good hire and Dillingham was the right guy for the job. When you take a look at this past season, it was really rough for them. They beat Northern Arizona in week one, but then would get boat raced by Oklahoma State in week two. 
After that, they lose at home to Eastern Michigan, and this was when things really began to fall apart. They'd get blown out by Utah and USC in back-to-back -back weeks before they would have their biggest win of the season and an upset victory over number 21 Washington, who ended up being a 10-2 team. This didn't really lead to much momentum though, as they then lost to Stanford, who was horrible, and then barely beat Colorado in late October. They got their third and final win of the season before they would lose out to UCLA, Washington State, Oregon State, and Arizona. Sun Devils fans were not happy that they lost the Territorial Cup, but Dillingham should get the ship rightened, and this should be a good competitive rivalry. Jed Fish is doing a terrific job at Arizona, and I hope this game can become one of the top rivalry matchups each and every year. Arizona State's athletic director was also very hopeful. He said, quote, Kenny's knowledge of the current college football landscape learned by coaching across the nation is needed and wanted at ASU. He will care at the highest level about our state, our alumni, our former players, and every single group that is important to help us win. We look forward to working with him and all Sun Devils in making his staff successful and helping our program reach its goals. When you take a look at the current roster, there definitely are some bright spots. They are going to be losing Emory Jones to the portal, which really is not that big of a deal, and they'll also lose Xavier Valade to the NFL, but they will return one of the top young receivers in the country in Elijah Badger, and they'll also bring back Jalen Conyers and Giovanni Sanders. Dillingham has already been hard at work, and he currently has a three-star quarterback in Israel Carter committed, and a ton of transfers. While Jake Smith is probably the most high-profile name on the transfer list, he also landed former four-star BYU quarterback Jacob Conover, and if he can somehow get his hands on Dante Moore, then Arizona State could be a quiet team to watch next year. I'm also curious to see how his staff fills out. By the way, Dillingham's going to be able to recruit. He'll probably have a fun offense, and hopefully the Arizona State administration will be patient with him. We don't really know how the NCAA is going to approach the situation, as they could either give him the death penalty or a slap on the wrist. Either way, I still believe Dillingham is the right guy for the job. I think he's going to make this program fun, and in a few years, he could make them into one of the top programs in the Pac-12. We're just going to have to wait and see, though. And now, I'd like to know your thoughts. If you're an Arizona State fan, what do you think about the current state of the program? What are your thoughts on Coach Dillingham? And what are your expectations for the future? Be sure to let me know down below. Let me know what player, coach, topic, or situation I can cover next. Leave a like if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.